Good day grade 10s, welcome to your second lesson in trigonometry and in this we are going to be introducing our trig ratios. So to start with we're only ever going to be looking at right angled triangles, right angled triangles. So let's have a look at our little right angle triangle here. Okay, since this is the 90 degrees there, that means that this side here would be called the hypotenuse. I'll write it over here. Hypotenuse, right? That is the hypotenuse. Then you need to decide on an angle. Okay, so let me explain what's going to happen. We are going to be using this thing here called Sarkatoa. Another phrase that you may have heard is silly old hint, cackle and howl till old age. What it is, is that a very great Greek many many years ago realized that there was a trig function that you could get where you could say that the ratio of, if we looked at for example this angle here, angle A, the ratio of the opposite side to the angle, which in this case is a little side A, over the hypotenuse would always give the same value. So if we have a specific angle A, we have a specific angle A, we would always have a specific ratio, okay, we'd have a specific ratio, it's proportional, we'd have a specific ratio of little a to c, or the opposite side to over the hypotenuse hypotenuse. And it didn't matter how big your triangle was. If I drew another line here, where this was supposed to be 90 degrees as well, sorry about that. And this now was the opposite. And that bit there was the hypotenuse. Or if I drew another little triangle here, where this was the opposite and that was the hypotenuse. The ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse would be the same. And what he worked out was that we could, if there's a trig function, okay, called sine, sine, okay. Now you don't need to know how that works. You just need to know that if I tell you sine A, sine is the shortcut of sine, okay, that is the ratio always of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay. If then they also realized that there was a similarly, let me just change colors, there was a ratio of the adjacent. Now adjacent means next to. So it would be the adjacent to that angle. Okay. So in other words, the whole of B over the whole of the hypotenuse. Now remember if you look at this carefully you can actually see that remember we last the last lesson that we spoke about similar triangles and we said the ratio of the sides are always in proportion and if you look here you've got this angle is common and we've drawn these at these 90 degrees so in fact this little triangle is similar to that triangle which is similar to that triangle which means that if I had the big A over the big C it would be in proportion to this little opposite over the new C, also equal to this over that, that ratio. Now, exactly the same thing, we've got the whole of this over the whole of that, okay? That is a ratio. So that would be the adjacent, adjacent over the hypotenuse. And again, because these are all similar triangles, it doesn't matter if we're looking at the full big AC to the big AB, or if we're looking from year to year, over year to year, or if we're looking from year to year, over year to year, they're always going to have the same ratio, they're always in proportion. And they designated this and they've worked it out as cosine, okay, it gives you the thing of cosine A. So it's the cosine of A is always equal to that ratio. But now we don't use the word cosine, we use cos. So instead of writing cosine, we write cos A. 
So cos A is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then finally, let me just change the color again. Let's change it to a green. Okay, if we look at the opposite side, this side here, over the adjacent again, opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side of the adjacent side is again going to be a specific ratio. So it's opposite over adjacent. adjacent. And again, it really doesn't matter if we're looking at this one here, the opposite over the adjacent, or if we're looking at the smaller opposite over adjacent, or if we're looking at the smallest opposite over adjacent, because these triangles are similar, these proportions are all the same, which means that for a specific angle, this ratio of opposite over adjacent remains the same. And they call that the tangent, the tangent of A, and again, we don't use the whole word tangent, we just say tan of A. So we'll say tan of A is equal to opposite of adjacent. So why, where does the Sokotoa come from? Well, Sokotoa is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So, there you've got the Sokotoa. Sine, opposite of hypotenuse, cos, adjacent of hypotenuse, tan, opposite of adjacent. Now listen, grade 10, so this year is super important. You are going to be using this all the way through to grade 12. So I would suggest that the very first thing you do when you are doing work on trigonometry is to write the words Sokotoa, or just this little phrase, on the top of your page, because that will help you with all these angles. Now let's look at a little video that it goes through some examples. I just need to change back to an arrow. Okay, let's look at the video. Let's just do a ton of more examples just so that we make sure that we're getting this trig function thing down well. So let's construct ourselves some right triangles. Let's construct ourselves some right triangles. And I want to be very clear, the way I've defined it so far, this will only work in right triangles. So if you're trying to find the trig functions of angles that aren't part of right triangles, we're going to see that we're going to have to construct right triangles. But let's just focus on the right triangles for now. So let's say that I have a triangle where, let's say this length down here is 7. And let's say the length of this side up here, let's say that that is 4. And let's figure out what the hypotenuse over here is going to be. So we know, let's call the hypotenuse h. We know that h squared is going to be equal to 7 squared plus 4 squared. We know that from the Pythagorean theorem, that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the square of each of the, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. 8 squared is equal to 7 squared plus 4 squared. So this is equal to 49 plus 16, 49 plus 16, see 49 plus 10 is 59, plus 6 is 65, it is 65. So this h squared, let me write h squared, it's a different shade of yellow, so we have h squared is equal to 65. Did I do that right? 49 plus 10 is 59, plus another 6 is 65, or we could say that h is equal to, if we take the square root of both sides, square root, square root of 65. And we really can't simplify this at all. This is 13, this is the same thing as 13 times 5. Both of those are not perfect squares, and they're both prime, so you can't simplify this anymore. So this is equal to the square root of 65. Now let's find the trig, let's find the trig functions for this angle up here. Let's call that angle up there theta. So whenever you do it, you always want to write down, at least for me it works out to write down, so katoa. So, so katoa. I have these vague memories of my trigonometry teacher. Maybe I read it in some book, I don't know, you know, some about some type of Indian princess named Sokotoa or whatever. But it's a very useful mnemonic. So we can apply Sokotoa. Let's find, let's say we wanted to find the cosine. We want to find the cosine of our angle. We want to find the cosine of our angle. You say Sokotoa. So the ka, ka tells us what to do with cosine. 
the ka part tells us that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's over here, look over here. To theta, what side is adjacent? Well, we know that the hypotenuse, we know that the hypotenuse is this side over here. So it can't be that side. The only other side that's kind of adjacent to it that isn't the hypotenuse is this 4. So the adjacent side over here, that side is, it's literally right next to the angle. It's one of the sides that kind of forms the angle. It's 4 over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, we already know, is square root of 65. So it's 4 over the square root of 65. And sometimes people will want you to rationalize the denominator, which means they don't like to have an irrational number in the denominator, like the square root of 65. And if, they, if you want to rewrite this without a irrational number in the denominator, you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 65. This clearly will not change the number, because we're multiplying it by something over itself. So we're multiplying the number by 1. That won't change the number, but at least it gets rid of the irrational number in the denominator. So the numerator becomes 4 times the square root of 65. And the denominator, square root of 65 times square root of 65, is just going to be 65. We didn't get rid of the irrational number. It's still there, but it's now in the numerator. Now let's do the other trig functions or at least the other core trig functions. We'll learn in the future that there's actually a ton of them, but they're all derived from these. So let's think about what the sine of theta is. Once again, go to so Katoa. The so tells us what to do with sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for this angle, what side is opposite? Well, you just go opposite it. What it opens into, it's opposite the 7. So the opposite side is the 7. This is right here. That is the opposite side. And then the hypotenuse. It's the opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the square root of 65. Square root of 65. And once again, if we wanted to rationalize this, we could multiply it times the square root of 65 over the square root of 65. In the numerator, we'll get 7 square roots of 65. And in the denominator, we will get just 65 again. Now let's do tangent. Let us do tangent. So if I asked you the tangent of the tangent of theta, once again, go back to Soka Toa. The Toa part tells us what to do with tangent. It tells us, it tells us that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, is equal to opposite over opposite over adjacent. So for this angle, what is opposite? We've already figured it out. It's 7. It opens into the 7. It's opposite the 7. So it's 7 over what side is adjacent? Well, this 4 is adjacent. This 4 is adjacent. So the adjacent side is 4. So it's 7 over 4. And we're done. We figured out all of the trig ratios for theta. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. I'll make it a little bit concrete. Because right now we've been saying, oh, what's tangent of x? What's tangent of theta? Let's make it a little bit more concrete. Let's say, let's say, let me draw another right triangle. There's another right triangle here. Everything we're dealing with, these are going to be right triangles. Let's say the hypotenuse has length 4. Let's say that this side over here has length 2. And let's say that this length over here is going to be 2 times the square root of 3. We can verify that this works. If you have this side squared, so you have, let me write it down, 2 times the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared is equal to what? This is 2, this is going to be 4 times 3, 4 times 3 plus 4. And this is going to be equal to 12 plus 4 is equal to 16. And 16 is indeed 4 squared. So this does equal 4 squared. It does equal 4 squared. It satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. And if you remember some of your work from 30, 60, 90 triangles that you might have learned in geometry, you might recognize that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This right here is our right angle. I should have drawn it from the get-go to show that this is a right triangle. This angle right over here is our 30 degree angle. Angle. And then this angle up here, this angle up here is a 
60 degree angle. And it's a 30, 60, 90 because the side opposite the 30 degrees is half the hypotenuse. And then the side opposite the 60 degrees is a square to 3 times the other side that's not the hypotenuse. So with that said, we're not going to, this isn't supposed to be a review of 30, 60, 90 triangles, although I just did it. Let's actually find the trig ratios for the different angles. So if I were to ask you, or if anyone were to ask you, what is, what is the sine of 30 degrees? And remember, the 30 degrees is one of the angles in this triangle, but it, it would apply whenever you have a 30 degree angle and you're dealing with the right triangle. We'll have broader definitions in the future. But if you say sine of 30 degrees, hey, this angle right over here is 30 degrees, so I can use this right triangle. And we just have to remember Sokotoa. Let me rewrite it. So, ka, toa. Sine tells us, uh, so tells us what to do with sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 30 degrees is the opposite side. That is the opposite side, which is 2 over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is 4. It is 2 fourths, which is the same thing as 1 half. Sine of 30 degrees, you'll see, is always going to be equal to 1 half. Now, what is the cosine? What is the cosine of 30 degrees? Once again, go back to so katoa. The ka tells us what to do with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we're looking at the 30 degree angle, it's the adjacent. This right over here is adjacent. It's right next to it. It's not the hypotenuse. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's 2 square roots of 3 adjacent over, over the hypotenuse, over 4. Or if we simplify that, we divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. It's the square root of 3 over 2. Finally, let's do the tangent. The tangent of 30 degrees. We go back to Soka Toa. Soka Toa. Toa tells us what to do with tangent. It's opposite over adjacent. We go to the 30 degree angle, because that's what we care about. Tangent of 30. Tangent of 30. Opposite is 2. Opposite is 2, and the adjacent is 2 squares of 3. It's right next to it. It's adjacent to it. Adjacent means next to. So 2 square roots of 3. So this is equal to, the 2's cancel out, 1 over the square root of 3. Or we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. So we have square root of 3 over square root of 3. And so this is going to be equal to the numerator is square root of 3, and then the denominator right over here is just going to be 3. So that's we've rationalized it. Square root of 3 over 3. Fair enough. Now let's use the same triangle to figure out the trig ratios for the 60 degrees, since we're, we've already drawn it. So what is, what is the sine of 60 degrees? I think you're hopefully getting the hang of it now. Sine is opposite over adjacent. So from the Sokotoa, for the 60 degree angle, what side is opposite? Well, it opens out into the 2 squares of 3. So the opposite side is 2 squares of 3. And from the 60 degree angle, the adjacent, or sorry, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Don't want to confuse you. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 2 squares of 3 over 4. 4 is the hypotenuse. So it is equal to, this simplifies to, square root of 3 over 2. What is the cosine of 60 degrees? Cosine of 60 degrees. So remember, so katoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is the 2 side. It's right next to the 60 degree angle. So it's 2 over the hypotenuse, which is 4. So this is equal to 1 half. And then finally, what is the tangent? What is the tangent of 60 degrees? Well, tangent, soka toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite the 60 degrees is 2 squares of 3. 2 squares of 3. And adjacent to that, adjacent to that is 2. Adjacent to 60 degrees is 2. So it's opposite over adjacent. 2 squares of 3 over 2, which is just equal to the square root of 3. And I just want to, you know, look how these are related. The sine of 30 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of 60 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is the same thing as the sine of 60 degrees. And then these guys are the inverse of each other. And I think if you think of a little bit about this triangle, it'll start to make sense why. We'll keep extending this and give you a lot more practice in the next few videos.
Great tens, I'm sure that you found that very useful. Please go and as I always say, I know you bored with hearing it, practice, 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 and then go do the assessments at the end of the section. Thank you, great tens. Have a lovely day.